So I just realized my shirt says do me a favor and stop talking, but when I sit down, it just says do me. Uh, um, oops. <laughs> I'm not changing my shirt. Hello everybody, welcome back to your weekday weekend. Uh, my name is Adam and welcome back. Today I wanted to go back to the uh, idea I had a few weeks ago of does doing CAD work also help you make CAD drawings and vice versa? Last time I mentioned that I made a CAD drawing at work and I wanted to see if I could recreate it from a professional looking drawing that I made. This time I want to see what I can do from my actual paper drawings. So we're basically going to make a model using the equivalent of a napkin drawing. And here they are. Let's see what we can do. So you may notice the first one is a bit um, standard and the second one is a bit unconventional. So we'll see what we can do. Um, I didn't even really mention a material type for the first one. Um, but I guess if you want to follow along, let's say, um, let, let's say it's uh, TTT's uh, MMGS steel. All right, here we go. So there might be things missing from this drawing, and that's kind of the point of the of today's video. So let's see where we can get here. First things first, I say we should probably sketch on this plane. I'm a little out of practice here. I actually haven't done CAD in quite a while. Um, Let's see here. Horizontal that and that, and then vertical that and that, and then horizontal that and that. Okay. Um, radius 40. Okay. And then this one is radius of 12. Okay. And then. Center to center is 62 millimeters. There we go. And then there's a tangent arc basic, basically between them here. Um, um, nope, uh, shift A. There we go, that'll work. Tangent that and that. Tangent that and that. Does that work? It does. That is not the shape I was expecting though. Oh, there we go. That's much better. Did I give a dimension for this tangent arc? I don't think I did. Which means I'm gonna have to give one. Okay. This looks about right here. Um, do 127 even here. Okay. And then um, shift A. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so actually we're doing all right. Um, we can do the 10 millimeter through. Um, and the same, same one. Then shift extrude, it is 40. Uh, what's the problem with this? Oh, duh. Uh, I meant to do just a standard E. There we go. Cool. And then while we're at it, um, 24, that one's shifty, minus 6. Okay. And then on this plane, um, we need um, you sketch on this plane and P. Um, we're going to use 
that and that, we'll say. Reference figures. I actually want that as well. Okay. So we're going to do a line. Okay. So there's... 10 millimeters of a line here. 10 millimeters. And then there's a tangent arc like down here. Or there's there's an arc down here-ish. That just kind of do vertical there. And then distance to there is 26. And then um, this was R55, which is way too big. Maybe I meant to do diameter 55 because that's not quite. Well, no, that that could definitely work, actually. That might still be fine. Okay. And then, so basically we need a tangent arc from here to here. Um, tangent there, there. And then... Yeah, so this R55 needs to be a lot smaller. Let's do 27.5. Oh. There we go. That's a lot more like I wanted. Okay. So. Hmm. And I did not put a distance for... So I made this a couple of weeks ago, and this is the whole point of this video, is to see what kind of stuff I miss when I'm making a, a napkin drawing, basically. Um, and this might be the kind of thing you might have to do for a client. Maybe this is what they walk in with, and you have to make a couple assumptions or get back on the phone with them and say, hey, what, what was this distance here? What is this measurement? So, and they might just tell you, do what you can. You know, you never know. So, Quite short, I'd say. Let's make this. Um, let's make that ten. And then I just need to know where how how this goes. Should I make this? I'm gonna make this coincident with that. There we go. I feel like that's fun. And then finally. Finally, there's a 10 millimeter circle around there that is 56 from there. Um, and then I never said how far down it is. So let's go with um, 8. 10? 10. That's about right. Okay, and then shift uh, through all. Oh, duh. I didn't close it. I'm, I'm dumb. I did not close that. Um, line, 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 line. Right. Oh. There we go. Now. There we go. No. We actually, that's too deep. Okay, I screwed that up. Okay. Um, and then this needs to be like further up. So I need to like delete this constraint. Let's do like, I might need to increase this and then I need a distance for this like 
six. How's that look? Um, not too bad. Not too bad. Not quite what I drew. But also, I guessed on all of my values. So, not too bad. But, I'm gonna say we got this one for now. So, not quite what I drew, but using mostly the dimensions that I came up with uh, on the fly at work, I'd say this is not too bad. Alright, so let's get on with the next one, shall we? This one is MMGS ABS, and if you'll notice, it has a little note at the bottom. Forgive my horrible handwriting, but it says, this part is 3D printed. Thus, threads must be modeled. So, we're going to use a method uh, by Ex Machina Engineering today to get some easy threads in a Libre today. But the reason I went with this is because 3D printing is so important nowadays. People are using 3D printing a lot, even in professional workplaces. So being able to 3D model things like threads that you didn't need to 3D model before are really important. I know, I know, Adam's back on his high horse about threads again. Sorry, guys. But here we go. This one, in order to 3D print it, if you want to do this correctly, technically you should model this uh, sideways on the YZ plane or the XZ plane, like th this. Z positive going left in, in this case. Um, actually, I want to go z pod going right. There we go. Okay, we're going to start off by doing a line, horizontal. Um, and then a line up. Um, 36 divided by 2 is 18. And then... Uh, arc, which that part is horizontal. Uh, I put radius 120. I don't know how accurate that'll be, but we'll see. Um, horizontal with itself there. Okay. And radius of 20, which basically goes all the way around. Um, I'm going to need the highest part of that to be, okay, so I'm going to need, okay, 38, so wait a second, this and this is 38, there we go, which means I think my radius there is going to be wrong. Might even be very wrong, but somewhere on this. Coincident that and that. Yeah. I don't think I can do a radius of 20. Yeah, that's a built-in radius. Okay. So, okay. So my radius of 20 is wrong. I had a feeling when I looked at it now. Um, and I didn't put an overall length. That's really weird. I should have known better. Maybe I was rushing. Okay, well, let's make something up here. That looks to be about, I guess, 1, 120. Let's go 124. That's about what it is in that. That looks about right. Okay. So, from here. Let us finish and revolve. Uh, around that axis. There we go. Okay, so that's our first bit. And now we just need the threaded part, which isn't that hard. I promise if you've watched Ex Machina Engineering's video, it's not hard. So, firstly, uh, female M28 threads that go down 32 inches. Okay. And a chamfer 
four millimeters. Does that work? Ooh. Let's, okay, so I was wrong about that size. Let's make that three millimeters. Does that work a little better? That's better. Okay, so that's three millimeters. I did want a lip around the edge. I don't want it to overlap. Okay. Now, it's been a minute since I've done this. Let's see if I can remember what to do here. Boolean subtract. Cancel. And then library. Uh, generate. My parts category. There we go. My parts. Uh, I need a tapper. M28. Uh, M... I don't have an M28. What the hell? Boolean. Part. Uh, generate. Category. Standard parts and helpers. Tapper. M28. All right, there we go. Now, if I just, um, back to Boolean, constrain that, apply. Okay. There we go. Make the, let's just make it like 26. There we go. Much better. Because I made so many mistakes in my drawings, and especially in this one because everyone's tolerances for the threads are going to be different. Um, I'm not going to post like a, a mass for each part. You're still welcome to do them to tall Toby style, but you're going to have to kind of look at what I did. For my corrections, I might, I'm going to go back, I think, maybe edit my drawings and add the, um, the things that I missed right now so that you can do them too tall Toby style if you want, but I'm not going to add a mass um, just because I made so many mistakes myself in the drawings themselves. So anyway, that was just a little experiment to see how I did and I uh, went all right. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, check out weekdayweekend.net for more weekend vibes. Check out the Discord if you'd like to get in touch with me or maybe join the Minecraft server. Check out the rest of the YouTube channel for some uh, video games and things like that. Um, I think that's about it. I'll see you guys next time, next weekend. Bye!